Hello and welcome to the Wish You New podcast. I'm your host, Karen Bortvet. First, I would like to thank all of you for tuning in for our third episode of the Wish You New podcast. Thanks to all of you who listened last week, for all of the likes on Facebook, the shares, the subscribes, the followings of the newsletter. Can't tell you how much it meant to me to see all of those coming in. This week, our guest is following in the same theme from last week when we talked with Alex, who represented a deaf identity. This week, our guest is a sign language interpreter. His name is Dr. Stephen Collins, and he is going to address many of the questions that you sent to us about the job of an interpreter. So let's go to Stephen. First, Stephen, thank you so much for coming to share with us on the podcast. I am very excited to have you. I have a number of different questions for you today about interpreting in general, about deaf interpreting. Some of them are questions that I came up with, but many of them are from people who are going to be listening to the podcast, many of whom don't have much exposure to deaf culture or interpreters or deaf interpreters. So there's a whole range of questions. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Go ahead. And I'll try my best to answer them. The first question is, could you summarize what is the job of a sign language interpreter? You've been in this profession for many years. Maybe you can tell us some of the changes that you've seen in your time in the profession. I mean, in general, interpreters interpret from one language to another. Sign language interpreters usually interpret from a spoken language to a sign language and vice versa. And so just like any other interpreter, they're interpreting between two languages. And actually, just related to the previous question, part of the interpreter's responsibility is to also engage in what we call cultural mediation, where they help both parties understand one another through incorporating uh, important cultural information that makes the message understandable. Well, actually, back to your second question, interpreting has been around for many years, and sign language interpreting in the United States was sort of formalized when the Registry of Interpreters for the Deaf was founded in the in the 60s and they have been involved in professionalizing the profession and uh, they've helped to support efforts for deaf empowerment and this idea that deaf and hearing people are equal and they have an opportunity to participate in society just like anybody else And I would say that the biggest change in the last several years to the interpreting profession has been the Americans with Disabilities Act. The ADA was passed about 15 or 20 years ago, and that's been the most recent impact on the interpreting profession. And so our profession has developed and strengthened our ethical practices and procedures. And through the academic study of sign language linguistics, We now know more about what interpreters do and what they should be doing as a profession. And then quite recently, video relay services became widely available on a nationwide level. And so now interpreters and deaf people are able to call, deaf people are able to call hearing people basically 24 hours a day using an interpreter to place that phone call. Sign language interpreters interact with deaf people through the VRS system and place phone calls for them, and so they're experiencing types of sign language that they never would have seen before and experiencing accents that they wouldn't have seen in vocabulary and regionalisms that they wouldn't have known in the past. And so that has been a huge change. You mentioned formalizing the ethical practices around interpreting. What are some of the ethical issues that might come up when interpreting that many of us wouldn't think of? Well, in the old days, when interpreting was a very new profession, uh, interpreters in the past may have, because they were usually interpreting for people they know and friends and family, they may have felt very comfortable inserting their opinions while interpreting. And so interpreters were very actively involved because they were part of the community. And so they would uh, sort of, quote unquote, help the deaf people who they were interpreting before. And now we know that that isn't actually something that is beneficial. And so now the ethical practices are recognize the fact that interpreters need to keep their opinions to themselves so that the participants in the conversation are actually speaking to one another without 
the influence of the interpreter. Confidentiality, for example, is, an also, is also a big issue. The deaf community is a small community, and so if the interpreter leaves and talks about the things that they experienced during the interpreted interaction, that information gets out, and it violates the privacy of the participants who are involved. So now the National Interpreting Organization, the Interpreting um, Certification Body, has a code of professional conduct, and it applies and protects both hearing and deaf participants and hearing and deaf communities. And so those are just a couple of examples about how the profession has raised the bar ethically uh, to make what sign language interpreters do more appropriate for the consumers. We've been using the word interpreter. One of our listeners asked, is it a translator or is it an interpreter? Which word is correct and are they the same thing? That's a great profession. Uh, that's a great question. Interpreter and translator are similar, but they're very different functions. Translation generally suggests a process that's done with the translator by themselves and moving from, usually it's done between paper and paper, so it's the translator has plenty of time to think and do research and, and get, get resources to understand more about the message that they're working with. And so, for example, someone might uh, use an ASL video and type up an English version of that ASL message. That person, the translator, has plenty of time to work on that and consult with colleagues and experts and so forth. An interpreter is generally interpreting between, I mean, they're always working between two languages, but there are two people there. So, for example, you and I are working, communicating with one another through an interpreter. So it's not a paper and pen process, so to speak. So we are speaking to one another in virtually real time. The interpreter doesn't have a lot of time to prepare and consult with someone else about the, the process. Often people think that translators and interpreters are the same thing, but it's often mostly a question of the time that it takes. And so a message is given to the interpreter and pretty quickly the equivalent message in the other language is produced, and it enables two people to speak with one another in virtually real time. Translation, again, suggests that more time was involved, a more polished product, and so forth. And do you work as an interpreter or a translator, or both, depending on the situation? I actually do both, and it depends on the situation. So myself, I'm, I'm a certified deaf interpreter. I'm a CDI, they call us. And so most of my work is in interpretation. So I have someone there who is a deaf individual who gives me a message in ASL. And then, for example, I may be working with someone who's deaf and blind. I'm communicating with them through tactile sign language, which is a form of ASL that's presented through touch. There's a large population of deaf and blind people here in the community. And so that's my specialization. I have several other specializations, but you know many professions have that. Interpreters do as well. We have specializations. So most of my work is with the deaf and blind community. I do general interpreting as well in hospital settings or mental health settings, things like that. But you may be wondering, I'm a deaf person myself, and I work with other deaf people. And it has to do with first and second language. So my first language is ASL. I was born deaf, and I grew up using American Sign Language. And it doesn't mean that hearing interpreters can't do a perfectly acceptable job interpreting. But because my first language is American Sign Language, I'm able to understand deaf and deaf and blind people perhaps at a more in-depth level than others. And the same thing applies to people who interpret between spoken languages. If you're born as a French speaker, your understanding of French is going to be better than other people who may have learned English or Spanish first and became an, a spoken language interpreter later. I, I can give you an example. A couple of years ago, I was interpreting in a hospital setting, and I was interpreting for an older gentleman, and his ASL was just fine, but he had also recently suffered a stroke, and so his left hand was paralyzed, and I was able to understand him just fine, but the interpreter who I was working with, the hearing interpreter, didn't understand him at all. And it's just because of the comfort level that I have as a first language American Sign Language user 
that I was able to understand of at a more in-depth level, even though this person had, had experienced this medical situation that, that made his communication different. And so, for example, his finger spelling was quite different than the hearing interpreter was used to, but I was able to understand him just fine. His facial grammar, that, that's an important part of American Sign Language, was different than the hearing interpreter would have expected. The hearing doctor was trying to make conclusions about the deaf individual's meaning through his facial expressions that weren't exactly what the hearing doctor expected. And so my role was as a specialist in the setting. I might also work in mental health settings. You know, there might be a psychologist or someone who has a a patient who's both deaf and blind. The hearing interpreter may understand them at a perfectly acceptable level during some parts of the conversation, but in other parts, I'm there as a specialist to help bridge the gap. Uh, Deaf interpreters are often used in the court systems, for example. They often hire certified deaf interpreters because of the nature of the communication. It's high stakes. It's very important that it's accurate. And again, hearing interpreters might do a perfectly acceptable job, but there may be moments when they don't fully understand what's being said by the deaf individual. There's an element of American Sign Language called depiction that's very visual. And in those moments, hearing interpreters may have a difficult time with some elements of the narrative. And so I'm able to be present and support the hearing interpreter. And often deaf interpreters are working with their hearing colleagues as a team. They're usually not working alone. And even deaf consumers sometimes don't understand the role of the deaf interpreter. And so I'm educating both hearing and deaf consumers when I walk into a setting. And so deaf interpreters are really there for very specialized settings and work collaboratively with their hearing colleagues to make sure that the communication happens flawlessly. Has the specialization of certified deaf interpreters been around as long as the profession of interpreting? Or did it grow up later on? So it's interesting. When the Registry of Interpreters for the Deaf created the certification program for certified deaf interpreters, that was in the 1990s, and it started with a small group of five or six interpreters. Now there's over 200 certified deaf interpreters all across the U.S. Hearing interpreters have been certified for much longer. There was previously a different kind of certification for deaf interpreters, but, you know, it was something that was not really an interpreting certification. It was called the RSC. Those people actually did evaluations and and other things, but the CDI as a profession was really established in the 1990s. Now, if you're talking about deaf people who worked as deaf interpreters, they've been around for a long time. And I never thought of myself as a deaf interpreter, but me and many other deaf people worked as interpreters in the community, just, you know, working in the school system as teachers or just helping to clarify for friends and family. Many deaf people have done that throughout history, and they've served as intermediaries between deaf people and interpreters or deaf people and hearing people, and that really deaf people have been serving that kind of role for many, many years, even before certification. 